Here's an example of induced EMF and induced current. A square coil is made of 10 turns and has a side of length 10 centimeters. The coil lies in a one Tesla magnetic field that points into the page. The coil is flattened by pulling the sides in 0.2 seconds. The coil's resistance is 10 ohms. What is the magnitude and the direction of the induced current? First, we draw a diagram. And then, we know that to find the induced current, we will first have to find the induced EMF. The induced EMF is given by Faraday's law. We will use the expression for the average induced EMF. So the average induced EMF is equal to minus n, which is the number of turns, multiplied by the change in magnetic flux divided by the change in time. The change in magnetic flux is given by the final magnetic flux minus the initial magnetic flux. And the time difference will be the 0.2 seconds that it takes to flatten the loop. The number of turns is 10, so that's easy. Our initial flux will be given by B A cos theta, where theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the area vector. Now remember the area vector is at 90 degrees to the surface or to the area of the loop. So 90 degrees to the area of the loop means along the z-axis or sticking in and out of the paper. Therefore, the angle between the magnetic field and the area vector will be zero. Cos of zero is one, so our initial magnetic flux will just be B times A. Our final magnetic flux will be zero because the area is zero. So things are going to be pretty easy to calculate. The average EMF is given by minus the number of turns, that's 10, multiplied by open parentheses zero, our final flux, minus one, which is the magnetic field, times 0 0.1 meters times 0 0.1 meters, which is our area. Then we divide that by 0 0.2 and find that the average induced EMF is half a volt. To find the induced current, we use Ohm's law. So V is equal to IR becomes I is equal to V over R. And half a volt divided by 10 ohms will give us 50 milliamperes. So 50 milliamperes is our induced current. And to find the direction of the induced current, we now need to consider the change in magnetic flux. The initial magnetic field points into the page. The flux decreases because the area decreases. That means the amount of magnetic field through our loop decreases. The induced field is therefore in the same direction as the initial magnetic flux into the page. Remember, the induced field wants things to stay the same. It wants to maintain the same amount of magnetic field into the page. So it has to be in the same direction as the initial field if the flux decreases. To find the direction of the induced current, I put my right thumb in the direction of the induced field. So my right thumb is pointing into the computer screen. And I watch my fingers of my right hand. They are curling in the clockwise direction. So this tells me that the induced current is clockwise. All done. Spread the joy of physics.